What's going on everyone, it's the Fake Weeb here, and today I'm going to be reviewing chapter 174 of Jujutsu Kaisen. This chapter officially marks the start of the Sendai colony, as we have now finished Tokyo Colony number 1, which lasted around 13 chapters I believe, so I'm interested to see just how long or how many chapters the Sendai colony will have. Also, the Jujutsu Kaisen manga will be going on break next week, so no new chapter until February 19th. Hopefully, Gege gets a well-rested break as he definitely deserves one for consistently releasing bangers after bangers. But yeah, as always guys, before I get on to the review, I would kindly appreciate it if you can drop a like on the video as that would help me out a ton, and consider subscribing to the channel for some more awesome Jujutsu Kaisen manga videos appearing in your sub feed. With all that out of the way, let's get back to the video. Alright, so the chapter starts with Takako and Ryu, the new characters that were introduced in the last chapter, looking at one of Dhruv's Shikigami. In the last chapter, we learned that Dhruv had two independent Shikigamis, and his Shikigami are the giant moth-like creatures we see in this panel. However, Takako and Ryu notice that Dhruv's Shikigami is disappearing. They realize that someone must have killed Dhruv for his Shikigami going away, so Ryu calls for his co Kogane and commanded to display players who had a change in points within a 1 meter radius. This is for him to know and track the person that killed Druv. That person is none other than our boy Yuta Okotsu. Takako thinks that Kurorushi, the cockroach introduced in the last chapter, will make its move. We learn that Kurorishi was dormant and would awake once certain conditions disappear. It seems like those conditions must have been related to Druv as it states, Kurorishi realized that he was at a disadvantage against Druv, so he went dormant and hid in his colony. Now that Druv's dead, those conditions break and Kurorishi is now out loose. This is just a wild guess, but the conditions could have been something like he feared Druv, and so he went into a state of hibernation, waiting for someone else to kill him in order to awaken. That's what I'm kind of imagining. We then see Yuta taking care of innocent people, as the colony is very dangerous. I guess these are the civilians that thought too lightly of the idea with the culling games, because if you remember, Kenjaku gave everyone a choice whether to enter the culling games or not. So by choice, these civilians chose to enter the culling games as I guess they didn't think it would be that bad. A certain sound then starts ringing near Yuta and the group of civilians. Yuta yells at them to run inside the stadium as a huge swarm of cockroaches is on its way. He sees a teenager running from it. The teenager shouts for help, but as Yuta tries to grab him out of there, he's already eaten out from the inside and dies as only his skeleton body is left. This shows that these cockroaches are indeed real and strengthened with cursed energy. As the civilians run away towards the bridge, the swarm of cockroaches follow them. Yuta decides to partially summon Rika and destroy the bridge. This is so the cockroaches can't get to the civilians. With only Yuta for them to eat, they charge at him, but Yuta swings his sword, which ends up burning all the cockroaches. Ryu sees this from afar, and says that his output isn't bad, but his amount of cursed energy is amazing. We know Ryu boasts the highest cursed energy output among the culling game players, so I wonder how that will work out once he faces against Akotsu. Takako also sees this from afar, and points out that Yuta was able to spawn a Shikigami without its full body. She is talking about Rika here as Yuta can seemingly now spawn the spirit partially. This shows how much control Yuta has gotten over Rika's manifestation as he doesn't have to spawn Rika fully and go crazy. From what Takaka has seen so far, she points out that Yuta killing Druv was not a fluke. Also at this point, it's confirmed that I guess she can indeed fly. Kurorishi then comes out of a river near Yuta. We learn that Kurorishi has an unlimited appetite and through parthenogenesis, the more he eats, the more cockroaches he can reproduce. After waking from dormant, he is now in a state of starvation, so he instantly decides to eat Yuta. 
Oh man, I find it funny that this cockroach thinks he can seriously eat Yuta Akotsu, the second strongest sorcerer. Yuta was planning to add a rule to allow entering and exiting freely from colonies, but there's no way he can let players like Druv and Kurorishi, whose curse techniques are wide range and attack humans indiscriminately. While establishing linkage between the colonies is absolutely necessary, he must eliminate all these types of players first so he's prioritizing by adding a way of contact between the colonies so he can know when all dangerous players like Kurorishi are gone and only then he can add the enter slash exit rule. Okay so first of all if the translation is correct then players are currently not able to move between colonies because Yuta wants to create a rule like that to happen but Tengen did say that there was no rule about exiting or entering colonies which I guess in a way could make sense for saying a rule like that hasn't been created because at first I interpreted Tengen's no rule as being that there just isn't a restriction where you can move between colonies but no I guess Tengen meant that there was no rule of saying you are able to move between colonies meaning you have to create one. Either Tengen is lying giving us false information or the translation is worded a bit weirdly. Whatever it is some of you guys might be wondering well then how did Angel move between colonies as she was supposed to be in Tokyo Colony number 2, but now is in Tokyo Colony number 1 with Megami. And why did Megami say that he will leave the colony he was in, implying that he could travel to another colony? Well, this is just a future speculation, but we see that Yuta killed Druv and possibly interacted with Kurorishi at around 11.30ish AM. Yuta and Megami entered Tokyo Colony number 1 sometime after 12pm. So at a minimum, there was at least 30 minutes or more till Yuji and Megami entered their colony by the time Yuta had already killed Druv. Meaning, Yuta potentially will add this moving colony rule in the future. We are kind of seeing 30 or more minutes before the current timeline to see what Yuta has been dealing with, and so sometime soon, Yuta should have already added the moving colonies rule, which would explain why Angel could move between colonies and why Megami insisted into moving to one. Yuta starts thinking about how in the Shibuya incident, everyone is exhausted mentally, physically, and that they can't afford to go through it another time. He then says, I won't ever let Gojo Sensei have to kill his best friend again. I will kill Kinjaku. I alone will get those 400 points. Holy shit man, Yuta ain't playing no games as he states that he's gonna get 400 points as he wants to add the 4 rules, right? 4 rules, 2 of Megami's and 2 of his own. As I said earlier, we are seeing Yuta 30 minutes or more before the current timeline, so he doesn't know that Yuji has already made one of Megami's proposed rules that was transferring points between other players. And I guess at this point, we can 90% believe that he will defeat Kurorishi and the other two pillars somehow get at least 100 or more points and already add the moving colony rule, which would lead to why Angel moved colonies and you know why Megami insisted into moving to one. But yeah, the chapter ends with Kurorishi bringing out his sword called the Feaster Life Blade via fan translation and described as a magic sword where life and death crosses paths. As intriguing as that sounds, I think our boy Yuta will be okay and defeat Kurorishi without much struggle. Again, there won't be a new chapter next week, which is interesting because while I feel like Geki Ekutami obviously decided to take a break, it's also the week where Jujutsu Kaisen is supposedly revealing an important announcement. I mean, I don't know if that break has any ties with that, if that sounds more believable for a season 2 reveal, or it's all just a coincidence. Nonetheless, this is actually the only break where I feel like I can wait the two weeks, because Ekutami has structured this entire culling game arc really well so far, and it gives me time to think a lot about the story. Uh, also, I've got a couple of videos I want to make during the break, so if you're hungry for any Jujutsu Kaisen content, then don't worry, because your boy Fakes Weeb got you with a theory and a couple of other videos, especially whatever that new announcement will be on February 12th. Let me know in the comment section down below how you felt about this chapter. 
Any thoughts? Any predictions for how this battle is going to go down? I mean, imagine Yuta just pulls out a bug spray and, you know, that's how he defeats the cockroach pillar. Uh, nah, but in all seriousness, guys, thank you so much for watching my review for chapter 174 of Jujutsu Kaisen. It's been the fake weeb, and I'm out. Peace.